is wrong with Sandy Alcantara? Let's discuss on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on Thursday, June 22nd. I am Frank Sample, joined by Chris Towers. Let's talk about Sandy, who... He's going through it right now. Seven innings, 10 hits allowed, five runs up against the Blue Jays. He allowed nine hard hits in this game. Has allowed five or more runs in five of his 15 starts. He now has a 508 ERA and a 125 whip. His strand rate is the second lowest among qualified starting pitchers. And Chris, I was reading an article that said the pitch timer might be factoring into uh, him pitching with runners on base. What are your latest thoughts on uh, Sandy Alcantara and the struggles he's going through? Yeah, that's a tough one because you get more time with runners on base, and he's been much better with the bases empty than with runners on base. I That's the kind of thing where it, it's just impossible to know, right? Whether whether the pitch clock is, is bothering someone, and I, I tend to not really factor it into my analysis for any given player unless they talk about it, and, and maybe that's a, a real issue for him, but I... Sandy's a really tough pitcher to figure out what's wrong because you can see like specific things that are not right, right? Like his changeup has not been as effective so far. Batters are hitting it in the air more often than they did last year. They're hitting it harder than they did last year. And those are bad things. Obviously his sinker again, getting hit a little harder across the board. The problem is it's not like, you know, he's throwing the pitch around the same velocity. His velocity's down you know, half a mile per hour. That's not particularly concerning. His spin rates are, are right where you expect them to be. His extension, his release point, all those things look pretty much the same. The movement profiles all look the same. And so it's just, I wonder if he's just not executing right. I mean, clearly he's not executing right, but maybe he's leaving the pitches up a little more often than he should or, or something. But it's all to say that because there's no one obvious thing that's gone wrong for Sandy Alcantara, I tend to think that it's mostly just maybe a little bad luck, maybe a little poor execution, but nothing that he can't fix. If you ask me to take the over or under on a 350 ERA the rest of the way, I would take the under for Sandy Alcantara. I do think he'll figure it out, but look, this might be his version of last year's Jose Barrios, where there's no silver bullet explanation for why he's bad and he fixes it next season, but maybe he just doesn't fix it this season. That being said, you probably shouldn't trade him if you have him. And I think I would still try to trade for him. I think better days are ahead. Are you starting him next week? Two starts at the Red Sox, at the Braves. It really does not get much tougher than that. Yeah, that's significantly less than ideal. And something that we say on this podcast a lot, or more so on the full episode of Fantasy Baseball today, is if you can't start a pitcher on a two-start week, you probably don't need to have them on your roster. That doesn't apply to everyone. It certainly doesn't apply to Sandy Alcantara. I think it's okay to sit him uh, in a Roto League. In a points league, I think I'm still starting him, though. All right. What happened in Gavin Williams' debut? Let's talk about it. He was facing the Oakland A's, and he went five and two-thirds innings, four runs allowed, three walks to four strikeouts, only had seven swinging strikes, a four-pitch mix, averaged 95.5 miles per hour with that fastball. Chris, what did you see from Gavin Williams here in his debut? Yeah, good hard fastball that he didn't necessarily command super well in this one. If you look at like the the pitch charts, that's a lot of arm side high misses with the fastball and then low misses with the curveball. But, you know, once he settled in, you know, he did have some pretty good stretches in this game. And, you know, one thing I did like to see was he threw 84 pitches, his first 42 pitches. His fastball usage was like 63%. His second batch of 42 pitches, his fastball usage was down to like 45%. That shows to me that he has the confidence in his full repertoire. You know, his slider in the minor leagues was a pitch that he threw in the strike zone and garnered a lot of weak contact. I think that's a good sign. And the curveball was a good swing and miss pitch for him. So all in all, not a particularly disappointing outing. You know, it, obviously not the results you were looking for, but nothing here suggests that Gavin Williams is going to struggle moving forward. Let's wrap up with some quick waiver wire outfield decisions and two names. First up are Luis Matos and Jake Fraley. Chris, who would you rather have? I think Luis Matos probably has more upside because Jake Fraley is a platoon bat who, you know, that limits the ceiling. But, you know, in your Roto leagues, Jake Fraley 
He's played like 126 games since getting to the Reds over the last two seasons. 20 homers, 16 stolen bases, gets on base. I think he's a a pretty useful fifth outfielder, but Luis Matos certainly has more upside. All right, this next uh, group of two, Tommy Pham or Alec Thomas, who recently got recalled by the D-backs. I like Alec Thomas, and there's a lot to like in the quality of contact metrics for him. You know, the it's not a superstar profile necessarily, but he's been productive at AAA over the course of the last couple of seasons despite struggling at the majors. So I do still think there's some upside there. The problem is, He's just been a disaster against lefties. 365 OPS at the major league level against lefties. That is a pitcher, basically. And so I, I think unless he figures that out, and we'll give him some time, but I, I think if you need someone right now, Tommy Pham's certainly more useful. All right. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye. 